Today, at least six million people are practicing TM worldwide. Those who practice it say Transcendental Meditation is not a religion or a cult. People who believe in Jesus, Buddha, the Quran, the Torah, all religions, all ethnicities practice Transcendental Meditation. Many families moved to Fairfield, Iowa to fully immerse themselves in TM and the teachings of the movement's leader and guru, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. So I'm going to go ahead and get these keys started. Carol and Paul Weiner have been married now for nearly two decades. Four years ago, they moved here with their two children from an affluent suburb in Atlanta. They say they were very happy, but after making the move to Iowa, their children have blossomed and their marriage is stronger than ever. Well, hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. I am just loving your garden Isn't in the front yard. Phenomenal? You make it better. That's the it's thing to like say. Heaven. Baby, <laughs> <yourself>. <laughs> hey. Baby. Oh, so thrilled to have What you. a beautiful home. As I was driving to the winers, I noticed many homes face the same direction, east. I found out they're built according to the principles of something called Vastu architecture. Like Transcendental Meditation, or TM, Vastu design also dates back to ancient India and is based on the laws of nature. It reminds me a lot of feng shui, which I know a lot of you've heard about. Uh, Architect Jonathan Lipman is an expert on Vastu design and helped renovate the winer's home, which is a beautiful example of this type of architecture. Jonathan believes that the secret to a happy family life begins with the direction your house faces. Houses have influences on us? They sure do. Everybody experiences it. And we have the formulas so that we can design a house creating good health, happiness, family harmony. Wow. Yeah. And so what dictates whether or not your house is going to have a good influence? The single biggest thing is its orientation. The sun rises in the east. When our house faces east, then we get the influence of nourishment from the sun. It may be hard to believe, but it's completely measurable. It's real. Every roof is topped with an ornament called a kalash, which connects the individual and nature. This is black tea leaves and some cardamom. Mm. So, Paul, when did you start meditating? Oh, um, 1985. 85. We met in 90, mm -hmm. Something like in that. New Jersey. Were you a skeptic at first? Totally. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I'm a good little Presbyterian girl. Uh -huh. My dad mm -hmm. was the minister. And my good mom, Presbyterians don't meditate? Oh, and That's that was true. totally out of my paradigm. You know, yeah. mom was the organist. But I will say that it was watching him, how different he was before and after he meditated. Really? That made me feel much more comfortable with it. First of all, what is what has meditating done for you since you've been doing it since 1985? It's allowed me to put everything into perspective. And for you, Miss Skeptic, what did it do for you? Uh, well, I started because I had migraines. Mm. And um, I was consulting 70 hours, you know, working 60, 70 hours a week, so I couldn't afford to be under the weather. I had to be billing and on top of it. So it was just by lying down beside him while he meditated that the migraines went away. So I don't have migraines anymore. Um, I think over time, though, what it has done for me is um, certainly made me more passionate in my faith, not because of what I've experienced during meditation, but because, um, I guess, because I come out of meditation more clear and more awake and more alert. Mm -hmm. And so that's, to me, the most incredible gift. I said I'm healthy and I'm alert and I can take it all in 